Somebody said it sure is hot out here today. Well, guess what? Hell is hotter. Amen. Amen. That's a place that I'm trying to avoid tonight. This is why, the reason why we do what we do. This is the reason why we go where we go. This is the reason why we deny our flesh. This is the reason why we sacrifice the things that our flesh wants and needs and desires down here. We do all that so that I can obtain a heavenly crown. Because this world is soon to come to an end. Amen. This world is winding up. God is pushing this world to the brink of destruction. Yeah. Because this world has to become so wicked that God is justified to destroy it all with fire. And we sit here and we look at it every day, day in and day out. And you know what? It's so easy to get used to the filth and the flesh and the garbage that's going on in this world. It's so easy to get acclimated to it. But the Bible says that God is coming after a people which is called after his name. God's coming after a people without spot or blemish or any such thing. And let me tell you that the things of this world will spot your garment. It will put blemishes on you. And let me tell you, God's church, amen, has no spot or wrinkle or any such thing. The only way for you and I to escape the destruction that is going to be falling here is through God's church. Amen. Amen. The only way for us to escape, Brother Dan, is through repentance. Amen. That's, that's dying out to sin. That's asking God to forgive you. And that's walking in the opposite direction. It's for baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus' name won't do it. Lord Jesus won't do it. Lord Jesus Christ won't do it. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost won't do it. There's only one name under heaven given among men, the Bible tells us, whereby we must be saved. And that Bible says that that name is Jesus Christ. The infilling of the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you get that Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in other tongues because the Bible done declared it. The earliest part of this church, the church of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost was in the upper room, about 120 of them, including Mary, the mother of the Lord. She was up there because Mary had to have the Holy Ghost. They were up there, they were seeking. You want to know how you get the Holy Ghost? You got to seek for it. You got to tarry for it. God's not just going to pour it on you. You're going to have to want it. Yes, right. You're going to have to want it more than anything yes, right. in this life. Right. They were in the upper room, they were tearing, they were praying for the Holy Ghost. The Lord told him, he said, go and tarry at the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The world declares that speaking in tongues is of the devil. But the Bible says that speaking in tongues, amen, they spoke in tongues when the Spirit was poured out upon them. The Bible says there's only one unforgivable sin, and that unforgivable sin is blaspheming the Holy Ghost, basically saying that the Holy Ghost is the devil. Woe to those that say speaking in tongues is of the devil. Somebody said, why did God choose the tongue? Because the book of James tells us that the most unruly member of your body is your tongue. That no man can tame your tongue. Your tongue wants to lash out. Your tongue wants to, to, to smart off. Your, your tongue wants to do all sorts of manner of filth. Com communication coming out of your body. And Brother Dale, I can't control my tongue. The only thing that can control my tongue is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And when you have completely yielded yourself over to God, every member of your body, amen, in complete submission,
generation to come. The last thing to go is going to be your tongue, which is why God takes control of the tongue and then and he allows another tongue to come out of your mouth. I didn't write it. The Bible declared it. Every single time in the book of Acts where the church gathered together, amen, where the church was praying and they were seeking the Holy Ghost, they all spoke with tongues every single time. You can't get around it. If you haven't spoken in tongues, Fred, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. And without the Holy Ghost, you ain't going. Boy, that's a hard preacher up there. I sat under some hard preachers. But I thank God for a man of God that got up behind a pulpit and told me what I needed to do to be saved. Told me what I needed to do to obtain salvation. Told me what I needed to do to escape the destruction that is headed for this whole world. Got some scriptures tonight. Brother Jason, give me Amos. Chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. Some of us still preach out of the book of Amos. <laughs> there was an inside joke sitting around the table last night. <laughs> well, I never hear anybody preach out of Amos or Habakkuk or Haggai anymore. <laughs> well, here we go. We got the book of Amos tonight. Eighth chapter. Begin reading verses 11 and 12. Go ahead. Behold, the days come. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Read. God, that I will send a famine in the land. He said that I'm going to send a famine in the land. You know what a famine is? A famine is, is no food. That's what a famine is. Read. Not a famine of bread. Not a famine of bread. Nor a thirst for water. Nor a thirst for water, not a famine for, for eating. As you can tell, I'm not in a famine right now. I am a poster child for what Jenny Craig is looking for. <laughs> There's no lack in my house, thank God. Praise the Lord. He said, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water. Read. But of hearing the words of the Lord. But of hearing the words of the Lord. This world is long for hearing the word of God. There are so-called preachers out there, these mega churches, you know what they are? They're false idol temples. Yeah. They're not preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. But they're preaching their own doctrine, their own commandments, their own traditions. They've changed it. They changed the word of God. That all you got to do is accept Christ in your heart and you're saved. I've never read that in the King James Bible. No, no. Nowhere does it say come forth, accept the Lord as your personal Savior. Shake the preacher's hand and you're saved. And then you go out and you openly show up by being baptized. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It ain't in the book, folks. No, I can quote it, Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of. Yes. Yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they ain't names. They ain't one name mentioned in that scripture. You got to search. The Bible said to search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Jesus Christ said, and they are they which testify of me. You got to search here a little and there a little. When it says to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got to find out what that name is. Amen. The Bible tells us over in Acts, the fourth chapter. They had just healed the lame man at the beautiful gate in Acts the third chapter. And, the, and the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees brought him in and they said, By what power or by what name have you done this miracle? Peter said in Acts the fourth chapter, the tenth verse, Then Peter said, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, does this man stand here before you whole? And he said in the 12th verse, it says, For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. They call it the Roman road. Romans 10 and 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You better believe that's true. 
He said that if thou come, he did not say if you should confess your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised you from the dead, you are saved. That's not what the Bible says. He said you shall be saved. Right. How can you believe on whom you've never heard? Right. How can you believe? How can you be saved if you don't even believe in the one who's trying to save you? Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes. He that believeth not shall be damned. See, you got to take every little scripture. They all work together for one. But the, the Bible, the Apostle Paul, when he was blinded on the road to Damascus, when and he was blinded, there was a man of God by the name of Ananias that was sent down. Amen. And he came in and he said, Brother Saul, the Lord. See, because he was Saul before he was converted. Called him the Apostle Paul after. He said, The Lord who you saw that day, saw today, has commanded me to come down that he might heal you. And he said, Why, tarry us thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord. Yeah. So the Apostle Paul himself was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Apostle Paul themselves, and they went down and found in the book of Acts, the 19th chapter, find certain disciples that believed in the Lord. Paul asked him a very simple question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Amen. This is the Apostle Paul that wrote the book of Romans. Right. That said in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th verse, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The same Apostle Paul asked these that believe, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said, how then were you baptized? Amen. The Apostle Paul believed in Acts 2.38, folks. The Apostle Paul believed in repenting, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and being filled with the precious Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The Apostle Paul had the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul spoke in tongues. The Apostle Paul went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ by the hands of Ananias, the man of God. There's a famine today in this world. They have perverted the word. Paul said, and no marvel, he said, after a my departed shall bring his wolf and rent among you, not sparing the flock. And he said, even among your own selves shall men rise up speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Brother Jason preached last night that they're, they're following out to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Amen. I've heard people say, well, once saved, always saved. Once God saves you, you can commit any sin that you want to, and you're all okay. It's all under the red friend of mine. Somebody lied to you. The Bible tells me that he that sinned is not the devil. Yeah. Right. Right. This old-fashioned preaching. Amen. <laughs> we got, we're doing it old-fashioned tonight. Ain't got no way to see we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Amen. Preachers used to get up there and they used to preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They used to preach what God gave them. And they didn't care about people's feelings. Friend, I don't care about your feelings. I care about your soul. Yeah. Today there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. And you and I must do everything we can to flee from the destruction. Not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water. But of hearing the words of the Lord, read verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea. They're going to wander from sea to sea. Friend, they're wandering here and there. They're wandering into ancient, uh, 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 ancient uh, eastern religions. All this... You know, you see this on TV, all these little, doing all that. That is, that is pagan religion. That's what that is. Yoga is pagan religion. Right. It's paganism. There's no place in God's church. It's old-fashioned, folks. It's old-fashioned. There's a way to be saved, and you want to know the way to be saved right here in the book. Amen. The apostles taught the right way. The apostles, the, the apostle Paul asked them, have you treated the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, whether or not, we've not as heard much, uh, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We didn't even know the Holy Ghost was there. Paul said, unto, how then were you baptized? They said, under John's baptism. Paul said, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that should believe after him, 
Read that. Give me, give me Acts 19. And a million scriptures go through my head. <laughs> I don't want to get them mixed up. Blessing, Lord. John barely baptized. Acts 19. Yep. Verse 4. John barely baptized. Read. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. With the baptism of repentance. Saying unto the people. Saying unto the people. That they should believe on him. That they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they said, we're saved. Nope. What does the Bible say? They were baptized. After they heard the word. Brother Dale, when they heard they weren't walking the right way. Every one of us sitting in here all come to that crossroads. So, Scale, I remember when I came to that crossroads. I was living in sin, asking God for the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God. There ain't three, there's only one. Jesus Christ is His name. Living in sin, going out and sinning, asking God for the Holy Ghost. Guess what? God ain't going to fill an unclean temple. No. You're going to have to submit to the commandments of God. And let me tell you, what you see today is an imperfect person up here. I am an imperfect man. Ask my wife and children. <laughs> you want to see the cowboy of man? Pack up all your junk, load the Cadillac down all the way the floorboards. Get in the car and get in horrible traffic. They know I am an imperfect person. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any, sin live any longer therein? What you see right now is somebody that is striving for perfection. What you see is somebody who's imperfect realizes that I'm a nobody without Jesus Christ. God can do a whole lot better than me. But you know what? I thank God for the opportunity. And I've got an opportunity and you have an opportunity. Somebody said, if this is really it, I hear this argument all the time. If this is really it, how's come this place is packed? How's come you're not having it in a convention center? If you're following the one true God, His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ Himself preached. This was God Almighty. God Almighty, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He preached. And he began preaching doctrine to them. He began telling them how to be saved. Praise the Lord. Many that walked with the Lord turned to him and said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? And many that walked with Jesus Christ turned and walked away. Then Peter looked to the, Jesus Christ looked to the twelve. The twelve hand-picked disciples, and yet one of them was a devil. He said, will you also go away? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. There's not many enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. This is Matthew, the seventh chapter. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Thank God I found the way. The multitude is not coming. As much as that hurts to say. I have loved ones out there that are not walking in this way, and I'm here to tell you tonight. If I myself... And not in the church of Jesus Christ when Gabriel blows that trumpet. My feet are going to stay on this ground. And I have an eternal damnation that I'm headed for. i got two choices here tonight. I can live it up in this world. I can do whatever I want. Brother Dale, I decide to live this way this morning. Amen. Did you hear me? There's nothing special about me. You know what it takes? Made up mind. Nothing special about me. Every day I have
have to wake up and decide to continue serving God. Right. Every day I have to make the conscious decision, sometimes multiple times during the day, yeah. right. that I'm going to stick with God. Thank you, Lord. Because this flesh of mine does not want to stick with God all the time. Is that all right for a preacher to say? Well, it's the truth anyhow. This flesh of mine does not want to stick with it all the time. I said the flesh. But thank God I got the Holy Ghost. And you know what? Without the Holy Ghost, I couldn't do it. If without the Holy Ghost, you can't do it. Somebody says, well, I'm going to get everything in my, my life just right. You can't fix it. Brother Dale, I couldn't fix my life. The only one who can fix your life and my life is Jesus Christ. Brother Dale, give me Joel 3 and 13. This week, before we came here, or last week before we came, I guess Sunday's first day of the week. Last week before we came here, we went up to Williamstown, Kentucky, to the Ark. And I don't know if you've ever been to the Ark up in Kentucky. They built a, a biblically proportioned Ark that Noah built according to the Bible. Somebody says, well, that's just a fable. Well, that's your opinion. My opinion is this is the true word of God. And everything in here is correct. Did everybody hear me? Everything in this book is correct. Build an ark. They put you on buses as you're driving up to this ark. And you can't even fathom the size of it. You can't even think, my goodness, how in the world did men without power tools build this thing? They did it. They did it. And I can imagine Noah standing there. When you're there, it becomes very real. The Bible says that there was one door on that ark. That's it. There's only one way into God's church. That ark is a type and shadow of the church of Jesus Christ that God was going to build one day. There was only one family on that ark. Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives. Noah's wife took on Noah's name in marriage. His three sons took on Noah's name through birth. And their wives took on their husband's name. Jesus Christ built this church. And he paid for it and he purchased it. There's only one family on this ark. They're all called by the same name. And that name is the church of Jesus Christ. And that's it. There's one door into that ark. You know the Bible says that God shut the door. Noah didn't shut the door. But there's coming a day, friend of mine, that this old ark is getting ready. The rain is coming. Right. Say, I don't believe you. Turn on the news. The rain is coming. Except you make it on that ark. Noah didn't know the day or the hour that the rain was going to come. But the word of the Lord came unto Noah and said, Noah, it's time. Get on the ark. And Noah got on that ark. And I can just picture Noah standing in that door just, just as uh, you and Brother Jason and Brother Dale stand up every week behind the pulpit saying, whosoever will, let him come and taste of the waters of life freely. Whosoever will, destruction is headed for the world. And this is your only escape. Somebody says, I can't live that way. You can't live this way. You got a man sitting right, right here, Brother Jason. 15, 16 years ago, came straight out of the world. Came into, sat down in the church started listening and saying, well, I don't believe 
that. Is that right? I don't believe that. That can't be right. Every church has to be right. You gotta bring them from near and far. You know what makes God's church so beautiful? Is that people from all different sorts of backgrounds and walks of life and social statuses according to the world now come into the church. Sister Luann, you were raised in church, but thank God you heard the word. And when you heard the word, it pricked your heart. I was talking to Sister Jean today. I had no idea that her and Brother Dale got the Holy Ghost the same time. They're about the same time. Same, same week. Same revival. Right. Now, Brother Dale was from a different background than Sister Jean, but they all heard the same message, and it pricked him in their heart. You know, if my wife decides that she turns and walks away and doesn't want to do it anymore, I have to be saved, folks. If my children decide they don't want to walk this way, I have to be saved, folks, because my wife is not going to be standing next to my side on the judgment day. Friend of mine, judgment day is coming. There's going to be one throne and one sets on that throne whose name is Jesus Christ, and he's going to open up the books, the Bible said. Uh, uh, John said in the book of Revelation and I saw the dead, both small and great, stand before the throne and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works yeah. we've all come from different backgrounds we've all come from different walks of life and yet every one of us, thank God, heard the same message and it pricked us in our heart. And thank God, God had mercy. Amen. And he helped me change, Brother Dale. Because I can't change myself. I needed a Savior. Right. Amen. Joel 3 and 13, read if you would, please. Put you in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Read. Come get you down. Read. The fact overfloweth, for their wickedness is great. Read the next verse. Multitudes, multitudes. Multitudes, multitudes. In the valley of decision. In the valley of decision. I was in the valley of decision one day. Amen. I was in that valley. Sister Lorraine, you were in that valley. Sister Gail, you were in that valley. Yep. Today, right now, there's multitudes in the valley of decision. Read. For the day of the Lord. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Friend, what are you going to do? You know that this world cannot continue as it is. You know that this world is headed for destruction. Brother Jason, give me Jeremiah 2 and 13. Brother Dale, give me 2 Kings 7, verses 1 through 3. The little kids are always talking about how when they get to one or two scriptures. Well, I came locked and loaded tonight. <laughs> Brother Tommy used to say, when I go out, I don't just take one bullet. <laughs> he said, I take bird shot and buck shot and slugs. Jeremiah 2.13. For my people have committed two evils. For my people have committed two evils. Read. They have forsaken me. They have forsaken me. Read. The fountain of living waters. The fountain of living waters. And hewed them out cisterns. And hewed them out cisterns. You know what a cistern is? A cistern is a, a, is a container for water. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. The world has forsaken. The church world has forsaken Jesus Christ to preach their own gospel. Say, well, how in the world can you call the The Bible calls them false prophets. The Bible calls them wolves in sheep's clothing. 
And the apostle said, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed to an angel of light. Why are we surprised if his angels become ministers of fire? In other words, ministers of light is what they're trying to portray themselves. But you know what they are? They're full of the devil. They are. Let me say it clearly. These false prophets, these false apostles are full of the devil. The Spirit of God ain't it. Somebody telling you, up our way, up our way, hanging up rainbow signs for Pride Month. Full of the devil at churches. Yeah. At churches. That's right. Up in Indianapolis, we went down to take uh, Joanna to the uh, Riley's Children's Hospital to have kidney surgery last November. And you drive down Meridian Street, which is uh, US 31, old US 31, right? through the center of town all the way down. It's a beautiful area, beautiful old mansions that are there. See, your flesh loves that. We drove to Jackson yesterday and it took us down this old, this old road. It took us off of the interstate. Of course, don't listen to the GPS. <laughs> you know, took us down and Mike and I, we went down to get some drumsticks. These beautiful old plantation homes. Beautiful mansions. Beautiful, Brother Dale. And you know what? It's pleasing to the eyes. Did you hear me? It's pleasing to the eyes. This place here. I said, good Lord, wouldn't it be nice to come home to a place like this every day? <laughs> but you know what? Somebody dusted everything in there before we got here. Somebody manicured this beautiful lawn before we got here. I didn't have to do it. That's why it'd be nice to come here and have people to do it for you. But I come from a long line of poor folk. So <laughs> I can't afford anybody. And my wife says, I ain't your maid. I'm your wife. <laughs> That's the truth. I did my laundry. I put my laundry in the lawn. <laughs> in the washer before I came out here tonight, just so everybody knows. <laughs> and it's pleasing to the flesh. Your flesh lusts after those things. I don't mind us. Can I be very blunt, blunt with you, very frank? Those big plantation homes that have this big, beautiful property. Brother Dale, my flesh looks at that, my flesh now. Looks at that and says, oh my, what a life we could live. My flesh says that. The Bible says, love not the world. I preached this the other night, I'm going to preach it again. Because it ain't going bad. Still just as good today. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And you know what I found? was that was the lust of the eyes. That's exactly what it was. And the pride of life. Saying, oh my, look at this beautiful gated community that I could live in. Man, I could have it all. We could, we could be sitting on easy street. That's the pride of life. Have servants underneath us that can take care of everything. That's the pride of life. That's the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. He said, these are not of the Father, but are of the world. And he said, but the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, Brother Dale, I'm choosing. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. You know, Nate was riding in our car last night. He said, man, this is a nice car. I said, well, Nate, I said, this is a really old car. I said, but I like to keep it polished. Somebody says, well, that's prideful. There's nothing prideful about taking care of what you got. And it ain't an idol. It's a car. It's gonna, it's gonna, it breaks down. Believe it or not, it broke down on the way down here. Because that's what Cadillacs do. <laughs> He said, it's a really nice car, and you know what? I'm thankful for what I have. There's nothing wrong with having nice stuff. Let me tell you, that car out there, it's going to melt with perfect heat one of these days. 
Everything that I own is going to melt with fervent heat. I decide. I choose to live this life and to neglect what this flesh wants to do. As a sales rep, as a salesman, I could, I could be selling nonstop. I could be making so much money selling nonstop. Taking the phone calls all the time. You know what I ain't going to do, Brother Dale? I ain't going to take the phone calls all the time. While I'm down there, I'm not checking my email. You want to know why? Because it'll be fine next Tuesday. It'll wait. On the way down, I wasn't calling on orders, potential orders that I might have coming in. You want to know why? Because I found something more important than selling tankers. I found something more important in my life than this world. Now, I, I love what I do. I love my career. I love my job. And I thank God for it because it's provided a living for us. But it's provided a living for us to be able to do the work of God. Because at the end of all this, every bit of this is going to burn. He said they've committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewn them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. In the book of Haggai, the Bible says that you continue, you go, instead of building up, see, they, they, had, they had done wrong. They weren't building God's temple. They weren't doing God's work. They were doing their own thing. You know, I could be out there building my own thing. I've got a, I've got a customer just down the road, Humboldt, Tennessee, Tyson Foods. Brother Dale, I got to take him yesterday and go on to visit. Or the day before on Friday, I should say. I could have gone to visit them. Well, I'm just going to swing through. I'm going to visit them. I could have stopped at Pilgrims. We drove by Pilgrims up in Mayfield, Kentucky. We drove by because I wanted to see the tornado damage. And Nora says, you're going to stop? I said, no, I ain't going to stop. You ain't going to stop. I'm headed to church. That's what I'm headed for. Mayfield, Kentucky, Pilgrims up there. It's going to be fine till next week. Brother Dale, I found something that, that makes my soul happy. I found something that gives me purpose. Right. Book of Haggai, I told him. God said that you're going around building your own life, your own things, building up your own houses, making everything just beautiful, and yet you've forsaken me. Right. Right. He said, you found, you know what you're doing? It's because you've forsaken me. All the money that you earn, you're throwing into a bag with holes in it. You gain much and you have little to show for it. I know because that's how God fixed it. Because the only thing that God wants to satisfy your soul is the Holy Ghost. Amen. The only thing that will make you feel complete yeah. and whole is serving the Lord. Right. You want to know how you start serving the Lord? You know how you start you know how I started? You know how this man started? And Sister Gail and everybody that's got the Holy Ghost here. Sister Jean, you know where it started? Down at an altar of repentance. That's where it all began. Sister Jean didn't, she wasn't just born Sister Jean. No. She wasn't born Sister Jean, the saint of God that we know. No. She wasn't born a holy woman of God. No. She had to make herself ready. Sister Jean became a holy woman of God when she forsook her flesh and her wants and her desire and came down to an altar. Friend, you can pray all you want at your house, but there's something about the holy altar of God at God's church. And wherever God's name is, that's where the altar is. Yes, right. God's looking for a commitment out of all of us, Brother Dale. God's still looking for a commitment out of me today. God's still looking for a commitment for all of us today. To decide today, Sister Jean had to wake up this morning and said, you know what? I ain't giving up today. I'm going to keep on pressing. Right. What I give you? Second Kings? Tell me where you're at. Thank you. Second Kings, what chapter? Second Kings 7 and 1. 
Read. Then Elijah said, Hear you the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time. Tomorrow about this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. It's going to be sold for a shekel, a measure of fine flour. And two measures of barley for a shekel. Two measures of barley for a shekel. What he was talking about, there was a famine in the land. Read. In the, in the gate of Samaria. In the gate of Samaria. Read. Then the Lord on whose hand the king laid. Yes. The man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven. He said, Behold. Somebody stand by and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. He said, I said, You're going to see with your eyes, but going to not be able to eat thereof. Read. Here's what I wanted to get to. There were four leprous men. At the entering in of the gate. At the entering in of the gate. See, the lepers. Lepers were outcasts back then. You know what? You and I, we were outcasts to this world. Some of us, we couldn't fit in in this world. You want to know why? We were the black sheep. You want to know why? Because God made us different. Yeah. Say, well, what do you mean different? God made us to where we wouldn't conform to the world. There was always something, whether you served God or whether you didn't serve God, there was always something there that wouldn't allow you to fit in. But you know what? When I got into the church, buddy, I fit. And I fit like a glove. And it's not because I'm anything special. It's because God put it in my heart. Pray, God, put it in my heart to serve you. Because unless God puts it in your heart, you're not going to serve it. Four lepers men that were sitting at the gate of Samaria. Read. And they said one to another. They said one to another. Why sit we here until we die? Why sit we here until we die? That's all I need. Tonight you are sitting at the gate of heaven. And I'm going to ask you, each and every one of us, young and old alike, there is no difference to God, whether you're man or woman. You know, even the world today, this is how, this is how corrupt the world we live in today. They cannot even tell you what a man and a woman is. Right. You talk about an evil, wicked world. Right. Friend, I want to escape from this world. Can't even tell can't even say that women are the only ones who can get pregnant today. You can't even call them a woman. You have to call them birthing persons. A friend of mine, the Bible says that in the garden, God created the man. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. Men are supposed to be with women and women are supposed to be with men. There's only two genders. We live in a wicked world. Right. And yet I want to make my home here. He said, lay not out for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves can break through and steal. But rather lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust can corrupt and thieves can break through and steal. You know, I see Sister Nazleen back there sitting in the chair and that little woman just in the last few years Brother Dale, how many times, Sister Naz, how many times did you hear the word? And yet one day, thank God, it clicked. Yes. Look at her today. Yes. Tell me that you're too young, you're too old, you're too middle-aged to start serving God. You got stuff to do. Friend, you ain't too young, you ain't too old to get down, to go to an old-fashioned altar of prayer and repent of your sins. Amen. To have a man of God take you out in the water and baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And God filled her with the precious Holy Ghost. She got the same Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues as you and I did. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is real. Jesus Christ is real. This gospel is real tonight. And it can change your life. Got one more scripture. Brother Jason, give me Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Real quick, this last passage. We're going to give you an opportunity to pray. I remember when I was a young person seeking the Holy Ghost. You know what? 
When they gave the altar call, Brother Bill, I was sitting in my seat, and I was antsy. There was ants in my pants. I was, I was just sitting there, and I was nervous. You want to know why? Because I needed to get to the altar. I needed to get up there and find my place. Right. Years ago, my Aunt Pam said, when she got the Holy Ghost, the early 70s, when she got the Holy Ghost at this revival, 16-week revival, over 150 people were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And over 100 received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. God was moving in the 70s, Brother Dale, and it was easy to get the Holy Ghost thing. It was easy. I'm finding it more and more difficult. Sister, uh, Sister Pam, Aunt Pam, said that she had to run. When the preacher gave the altar call, you had to run to the altar to find a spot. I'm talking about old-fashioned Holy Ghost time. Yeah. But you know what? The days are evil. Right. The days are coming to a close. Let me tell you, the Bible says, I sing that song, Midnight Cry. The Bible says, and at midnight, a cry was made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. The Bible says that there were ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. But they were all Waiting for the coming of the Lord. The Bible says that the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They made sure that they had extra. But the foolish took no oil with them. You can't survive without the Holy Ghost. Right. Since so the Bible says they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the, wise, the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. And the wise said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us. And you, Brother Dale, if somebody decides that they don't want to make heaven their home, i got to keep on walking. If, if my family decides that they don't want to serve God the right way and do it God's way, Brother Dale, i got to keep on preaching it just as straight as it is. I cannot change it. I can't adjust it. I can't conform it to my family or to my loved ones. I have loved ones, family that are not serving God the right way. And you know what? The Bible says you got to do it God's way, but i got to keep on walking because i got to make heaven my home. I have to make my calling and election sure tonight. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Read. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. Therefore, we ought to give the most more earnest heed. To the things which we have heard. To the things which we have heard. Friend, you better be listening to the man of God. You better be listening to your preacher. This man here has been faithful. He's been the same person. Praise the Lord. Preaching the same gospel. No matter who comes, no matter who doesn't, Brother Dale still stand on the gospel. Guess what? Noah, we talk about Noah all the time. You realize Noah preached for 120 years, and yet Noah only saved eight people, including himself. Noah only saved, no, only seven people beside Noah yeah. heard the word and obeyed. Yeah. God's not looking for the multitude. God's looking for those that are going to serve him. That's what he's looking for. The multitude didn't like when he preached. Why are they going to like when you and I preach? Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed. Read. Lest to, at any time, to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We should let them slip. Read. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. For if the word spoken by angels were steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience received. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense. A just recompense. In other words, he's talking about the fallen angels. The angels that rose up with Lucifer. Tried to rise up against the Lord. That God cast them down to everlasting punishment. Read. How shall we escape? How shall we escape? If we neglect. If we neglect so great salvation. Is that it? Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. And 
was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Thank God I heard a man of God preach one day, Brother Dale. Thank God I heard the word and thank God I obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered me. Brother Dale, come give the altar. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I enjoyed it. Amen. Amen. I just want to say one thing. 